This is Twit. There's another dark side to AI. You talked about it uh, on your uh, in, in a couple of articles and on your podcast. Synthetic media. We've seen stories about mm. in high schools about yeah. high school boys making uh, deep fake nudes of their classmates, uh, yeah. uh, which is not, I guess, not against the law, but sure is awful. Uh, what is against the law, I think, because I've seen people uh, arrested for it, is uh, deep fake child porn, even though no kid is involved. Yeah. Uh, we've just we've just begun. I yeah. think these. Oh, go ahead, Dan. I'm no, sorry. no, no. Go ahead, Brian. I, I was going to say, did you see the story about the? This is this is a little dark, and so I apologize. But did y'all see the story about the um, the the young girl that uh, basically a bunch of her her classmates made deep fake pornography yeah. of her and a whole bunch of other girls in yeah. her grade? I mean, this is this is nightmare stuff. I mean, I think a lot of you know adult women in the technology in industry have had this done to them, um, but we're talking about children like this is a huge violation and i really wonder how that's going to affect their their brain and their self-esteem and their trust oh i feel others. so bad for yeah the girls uh yeah. because they had nothing to do with it i also that's understand right. i mean teenage boys are <laughs> i remember yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't you know they got no uh they got no um frontal lobe basically they got no impulse control so if that technology exists, they're going to do it without regard yeah. to the consequences. I'm sure they're thinking about it. It's, it's happened in numerous high schools now. That's the sad thing. Um, What's the Captain Kirk line? Like, there's nothing wrong with him that's not wrong with the original model. Like, it's not going to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, so. yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not exactly a crime. Uh, that's that's part of the part of the problem. Um, well, I think it speaks to how, I mean, you know, we kind of put these tools out there and again, we never asked how they could be really misused to hurt people. And well, I it's think just it does speak. Technology yeah. outpaces our ability to, to legislate. I mean, that's obvious, that, that, right? That's fair, but I think like let's look at the coloring book prompt you just had made, right? Like they they went through, they're like, look, Brianna was a public figure. Let's leave her out of this. Yeah, I like Probably that. Probably a good right? policy, right? Yeah. So I think you can think through these things, and I think it doesn't speak to a lot of the the people that develop deep fake technology that they didn't put any real safeguards in it or even ways to detect it after the fact. Right. Um, you know. We are. I just finished Taylor Lorenz's Extremely yes. Unwise, Isn't that great? So which good. is a retelling of our recent history. We just lived the mid aughts, the inception of social media, mobile phones, and it feels as though, at least I, when I was at CBS, I spent time on the Facebook papers. It was one of the last things I did there. And a lot of that was not just some of the toxicity that was created by uh, unmoderated or loosely moderated social apps, but it, it is our, and Brianna, of course, you know about this. <laughs> I experienced quite a bit of this as well, but we had an opportunity. We have an opportunity right now to learn these lessons and to apply these lessons. Are we doing it? I don't know, but this opportunity is right now. It it appears as though we're going to relive recent history. Yeah. In 2019, speaking of recent history, researchers concluded 96% of the 14,000 deep fakes they found online were pornographic. That was in 2019 before generative AI. That was before deep fakes were any good. Yeah, it was hard. It was really expensive and hard to create yeah. deep fakes in 2019. And already the vast majority were pornographic. Um, yeah, I think humans, this is the other side of it. We are not to be trusted with advanced technologies. And yet we're very good at creating them. That's why I was talking before the show and maybe a little facetiously with the, I was saying to Brianna that I despair for our future um uh, it's if it almost you know what it feels like to me they always wonder why we are not visited by alien species i think if a civilization gets to this point and all of them have to before they can be spacefaring i would imagine they destroy themselves it's like that we never get to that spacefaring star trek 
time because we cannot survive with well, that's advanced a, technology. A Fermi dark. paradox solution, right? Talking about that dark, like right? all <laughs> alien species yeah. either go internal into VR or they destroy themselves. Yeah. First. Yeah. Or as Nick Bostrom says, it's all just a simulation anyway. Right. Oh <laughs> uh, I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't be. I am dark. I am dark. I mean, I worry, Welcome. Leo. I've been doing. Welcome. I've been coming on Twitter for a long. I used time. to be it's an like optimist. Every year, yeah. you get so much more yeah. cynical. I think and I get I feel smarter. Like the longer I've had my job, <laughs> I feel less and less cynical. Which is weird so, because you're on yeah. the front. I mean, with you're on the front lines of the dysfunctional American government, and you're yeah. and you're and you're optimistic. I, I am weird. I, it's Isn't not that, that I don't see problems. <laughs> it's that I see, I see the efforts to solve it. And it's, it's iterative. Like the real truth is Leah, we are seeing the end right now of a certain chapter of government that started with you mean the old people, Bush, who, the really, really old I, ones. I don't mean the old oh, people. Okay. I mean, there was an era of people leading both parties that ended with Bush too and started with Obama. And no matter what happens at the end of this year, the, that era of both parties is going to be over after this. And I think there are new people standing up. There's new leadership structures being done. And like some of the people I'm working with that are you know federally elected officials, they really get this stuff, right? So I, I just... And I see them really working to have a bigger voice in in how things are going, and it it, it okay. does give me a lot of hope. That's why I have you on because you give me. All hope. right, <laughs> Leo, you are an optimist, and that's one of the things that I think is very attractive. It's one reason it's fun to come on this show because yes. you are an optimist, and I think it's one reason, one big reason that people listen to this show. Yeah, they they care so about are you. you counseling? And your are you counseling me that I should? Stop talking dark and start living. I should turn into Richard no. Simmons. <laughs> no. Uh, I am. You know what? Here's here's my real when I'm when I'm not being facetious and I'm really thinking about it. Humans are simultaneously capable of great good and great evil, and it's all within the same person. It's not like they're bad, they're good. There are we are create the finest music and art, an architecture deep thinking, scientific discovery that is mind boggling. At the same time is at the very same time, we simultaneously make deep fake pornography of our high school classmates. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we are capable of both. And I don't, sure. I, I don't know if one is going to win out over the other. I don't think it, it doesn't, I think it's always looked like this, that there's a, a amazing depth to our depravity and our inhumanity at the same time as this amazing, goodness in us and i don't uh, it's a weird paradox and it's i think it's always been that way the i think one of the things we're wrestling with the societal level right now is technology is turning a lot of us into the worst versions of ourselves it just is that's right? kind of my uh, that's kind of my fear is that sure. it has been balanced all along but what, what's happened is we've weaponized these technologies yeah, we clearly weaponize social I, media. I mean, and that's now the end of it, right? It's just it's gotten to be just dismal. It, it, and I hear you on that, Leo. I also I think that you know I, I think that when you get older, you know, I'm in my 40s, and you see that things move in phases, right? And I genuinely do think there's going to be a moment that either. Like a, a conversation I see universally online right now by people on the right and the left is they're just tired of the hyperbole online. And I see a huge movement to just marginalize the people on both sides that just take everything out of context and scream at you about it all day long. I see a huge momentum towards shutting those people down. Good. I see the people that are getting power in my field in new media are the ones that go through and really critically examine claims and really look into that rather than just saying what the audience wants to hear. There's a huge growing market for that point of view on YouTube right now. People are turning into multi-millionaires like offering that point of view. So I think that at some point, 
we are going to look at this era of human history the same way that we looked at some of the darkest periods of American history before us, where the worst of ourselves did take over. And I think we're going to find a way to get past it. And you don't think this is an exception, this era that we're in? This is just another phase. I, I think it is a phase. I think yeah. it's going to come to an end. Humans can't keep living like this. It's too stressful. Yanko, <laughs> are you an optimist yeah. or a pessimist, or do you just... <laughs> You just don't pay any attention to it. Oh, uh, I am a realist. <laughs> yeah, you're German. You have it's, to be. That's your job. It's hard to be an optimist these days, especially like just the last couple of weeks, obviously. Um, generally, uh, looking at technology, I want to be an optimist, but there is also a lot going wrong. So it's, yeah, you have to strike a balance. And uh, I can see, I can I understand getting bogged down and seeing like the dark sides of it and yeah. getting getting sort of frustrated by those or depressed yeah. by those for sure well and you know ultimately uh, we've got to do something about uh climate change or there isn't going to be much more to talk about um and that's why when you bring and i think it was very germane dan you bring up the cost the energy cost of ai we can ill afford to be burning energy like this um or to we, be focused on these Hand wavy existential problems. Sorry, Fred the dog is. Oh, I like Fred. Don't, don't. A, oh, Fred. He's a good dog. He's a good dog. He's, a, he's okay. Yeah, he's a, yeah, don't worry about Fred. Deeply he, concerned about the energy costs of he's, chat GPT. He's very much got a dog in this hunt, as they say. Yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know what? I want to be cheered up. Thank you for saying I'm an optimist, Dan. Because I don't feel very optimistic these days. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows. Plus, membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.